that. Let's see. Growing up, I came from a, a family that started separated. You know, when I was two years old, my mom and dad were divorced, and my mom was living with another guy. Um, that was all right for a while. You know, he was, he was kind of cool up until the point there was this car crash. And, um, he got hit by a semi, and it just did all this crazy stuff with his head, and he kind of changed. He wasn't the person he was, and our family became really separated. We'd fight, we'd argue, we'd carry on. So, I never felt comfortable in my house. I never felt comfortable at home. Never felt comfortable with him. My mom worked second shift, and I went to school. I didn't feel comfortable around her because I didn't see her. So I always longed for this, you know, I wanna, I wanna be comfortable, I wanna have a place to fit in. Well, let's fast forward a couple years. And uh, that, uh, that fit in was my dad. I'd always go, go be with my dad and it was fun. And I, I got along with the family and you know, just this, this great time I'd have with him. But then he left, he was gone. He didn't tell me where he went, nothing. So I was pretty struck. Pretty good, you know, it hurt. And, um, you know, I kind of never really recovered from it up until like my freshman year of high school. You know, then I started to be, I tried to be sportsy. You know, I tried to do track, but track just, it didn't really work well, I fell out of it. I started in band, I did really well in band, but then I lost interest. Uh, I guess the easiest family to fall into for me was uh, everybody who'd run around and party. You know, they'd have a lot of fun, they would, they would go around, they'd joke, they'd laugh, they'd smoke, they'd drink, they'd do all this stuff. And it was just so easy to fit into because you know, when you got that high, you don't remember that. When you've got this certain amount of alcohol in you, you don't remember that. You don't remember anything, you just, you're there in that moment and that time and it's great and it's grand. So that's where I fell into for a little while and stuff. I started getting even rock here at home. And, uh, led to him and my mom getting a divorce. I snapped, he snapped, just everything went wrong. Um, me and my mom lived a uh, lived with each other for a little while. She still worked second shift, but then all of a sudden I had this freedom. You know, there was nobody at home that could tighten the reins, tighten anything, so I got worse and worse and worse. Eventually, I made new friends. These friends, they liked to, they liked to do pills, they'd drink, they'd smoke pot, they'd go out and steal at night to get the money for this stuff. And eventually that's the person I became. My mom found out about that soon after and she was pretty upset. You know, that was a point in time when we were moving and I sat her down one day and I was like, look, the reason you know, people are sniffed around is because you know, we stole that stuff. We sold these pills, we did that. And she, uh, she was mad, but eventually she helped me. She helped me kind of cover it up, kind of bury it away. And she didn't want to talk about it and I didn't want to talk about it. And then, uh, and then it came to a point where she wanted to move because she didn't feel comfortable in Michigan anymore. And, uh, she wanted to come back home. She wanted to come here to Grafton. And uh, the whole mindset that we had was we're going to have a fresh start. You know, just being her versus the world. Everything was going to be fine. So we moved down here. And for a little while it was. It was me and my mom. We lived with my sister. We would watch movies every night, we'd have a grand old time together, and then she, uh, she got a boyfriend. And she moved in with him, and all of a sudden I, uh, I didn't feel whole again. I didn't feel like I had that family aspect anymore. So I turned, turned right back into the person I was. You know, the easiest thing to find in this town, family-wise, was that family of guys who went out and partied every night. So that's what I did, and uh, ultimately it just got worse than it was before. 
I am. Um, I can remember nights that I can't remember anything. I'd be, I'd wake up the next morning and you know, I'd have my phone and I'd scroll through through some pictures and be like, wow, that happened. I did this. I did that. If somebody would tell me, this is what you did, Kyle. This is this is how you did this. You know, you you bombed like nine beers and passed out in the corner. You did this. No. It got taxing. It got bad, you know. My, me and my mom's relationship crumbled. Me and my sister's relationship crumbled. At school, I, I began to just skip school constantly on a regular basis. I missed some. 97 days of my senior year. That's, that's over half. And uh, my grades plummeted. Everything in life plummeted. Yeah, he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. Well, <clears throat> luckily, I was, um, when I was in high school, I was in something called entertainers. You know, we were singers and we were dancers. And uh, I've made a few friends in there. Not many, but I had one. You know, she, um, she came to church. She liked church. She, um, she would do Bible studies, different things like that. And she would, uh, she'd always invite me. She'd always be like, Kyle, come to church. And you know, for, for the longest time, I wasn't sure if I was mad at God or if I hated God or I didn't feel uncomfortable, but something just wasn't right about it. No, I, I went to church in Michigan with my mom a couple times. I just didn't like it. Not all about that life. Then one day, she told me, she goes, just um, just come to dinner. I'm gonna have dinner with my pastor. And I agreed. Free food. I had the munchies. Great mix. And uh, I went that night and I had uh, dinner with uh, Micah and his family. And I was shy. I was a little, a little drawn back. You know, I wasn't out there. I didn't talk much. Just kind of listened. Just kind of paid attention. You know, after dinner, they uh, they practiced a little bit down at the church. And um, it was just Patty, Meg, and Micah. They were up here singing, and I was just kind of kind of sitting back, just watching things go. And they had a drum set, and I uh, played around with the drum set a little bit. But I uh, talked with Micah some afterward, got to, got to learn a few things, convey a few different things, and then, um, and then we left. I was gone. I, um, that night, I can remember, I went right back to all those friends, right back to everything I had. I plastered out of my mind that night. But then, um, and slowly, things started, things started to feel off. Like, in my head, there'd be this little pick. I'd be like, that's not right. That's not right. Don't do that. And eventually, I just kind of, I kind of grew apart. You know, at that time, that little group of friends of mine, we were running low on cash, so we started selling some of the drugs that we had. And something in my head just kept picking and picking and picking. It was run away, get away, leave. And so, for about two weeks, I didn't talk to any of them. And I didn't, I didn't even see any. At the time, I didn't have a car, no way to do anything. I just sat at home. And I would just think, and think, and think. Oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how and that's when Patty again, she invited me to church. How he loves you know, I agreed this time. I don't know why I agreed this time, but I wanted to come to church. It seemed like the right thing to do. So, here I am, get up, dressed in my, my nicest pair of jeans I owned at the time. Nice little t-shirt. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was doing. I mean, as far as I know, I was chasing a pretty girl that liked church. And uh, I came that day. And I can't remember who spoke. But um, it's not really their words that I heard that day. 
you know, they could be up here on the altar. They, they'd say this, they'd say that, but I heard something deeper. You know, I stayed. After church was out, I didn't run for the door. I stayed. And everybody was gone, and it was me, Patty, Meg, and Micah. And I was talking with Micah. You know, at the time, I had wrecked my mother's car. All this bad stuff had been going on. And I just started to talk about it. Started to open up. Started to unravel a little bit. And then... Mike asked me if I wanted to go to the altar. And I agreed. And that was... That was the first day I ever accepted Christ. That was... That was that moment. That life-changing... That life-changing event. And from that day on, I wasn't the same. I, I remember after praying with Mike, he asked me, he goes, don't you feel that, that burden lifted off? And I, I kind of just nodded because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to act. But the coolest thing was, you know, here was Patty. She'd known me for about a year. And here was Micah and Meg, and they'd known me for like a month. But everybody cried when I accepted Christ. You know, Meg gave me a hug. She didn't know me that way. Micah gave me a hug. He didn't know me that way. Patty balled her eyes out and gave me a hug. And um, from that point on, I, I struggled a little bit changing at first. You know, I didn't want to let go of this life because I was scared that uh, you know, I might lose those friends or I might lose this. But, uh, since then, you know, life has improved. I'm, I'm closer with my mom. I'm closer with all my family. God has brought me a family that is ridiculously well. Things have just, it's fallen into place. I've never gone without anything. The things that I think I've needed are always there. But even better are the things that God knows I need. You know, that day, I don't know if I would call it so much Meg and everybody hugged me I'd say it was more you know, they welcomed me into a family that I didn't know I could have and all of a sudden I had this place to belong it's been amazing it's been ever since My name is Kyle Thrush, and I am The Well.